<laughs> Excellent. All I, right. I got I got Korean food in the hopes that it would make me less tired, but it turns out what I am is just as tired More but full tired. of Korean food. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you need, I mean, you need some kind of. There are worse things to be full of and tired. Oh that, no, it's it's great, right? But it's it's like I'm I'm tired, but also now I have the experience of having just eaten spicy food, and it didn't wake oh, me up at all. Oh yeah, uh, you need like a you need some, like caffeinated spicy food. I mean, <laughs> if they made like a caffeinated bibimbap, I would I would be on that hundred percent. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. Mm. This is what the, this is the thing. The people don't want energy drinks or energy pills yeah, or I, energy yeah, vapes well, or whatever the fuck the kids are doing these days to the get their energy. Not Alice, energy, I energy I, injections. They want their energy Korean food. That's yeah. which that's I would, thing. which I, I guess a uh, uh, new Patreon will uh, give us money so we can open an energy Korean restaurant. This yes. is going to be our like dill burrito arc as we get, yeah. we, we sort of like really get into the food business and what we sell is this product that only I like. <laughs> I I'm gonna open a bar at one point that only serves drinks I like. So I hear you. Uh huh. Sure. It'll do it. I'm looking uh, forward to that episode of Bar Rescue. The guy from Bar what? Rescue is gonna what? show up and be oh, and be like, yeah, you, you, no, you got to do the thing that I always do. You got to turn this into the same bar. Um, yes. And yeah. I've never watched Bar Rescue, but that does sound funny if it's just oh. HGTV for bars. Yeah, it is. There's this like it sort is. of wide, like sort of Italian guy who who shows up and he's like, "Here's your problem. Your bar has individuality in a bad way, and we're going to fix that by making it not have individuality anymore. And it's just it's gonna going to be like it, the it's bar. It's going to turn into a Weatherspoons. Yeah, it's genuinely, it's like American Weatherspoons. Yeah. Mm. Oh, so Ruby so Tuesday. depressing. Mm. Roz's secret shame is that he loves Ruby Tuesdays. I think, I think we have of, those here. Of, of the chain family restaurants with bars, I think Ruby Tuesdays is the best one. It's much better than Applebee's. Anything's it's much better, than, better Applebee's. than. I think it's better than Fridays. I think it's we, don't, we don't have Applebee's. We do have Fridays, and we do. I think. Don't quote me on this. Have Ruby Tuesdays as well. Do you um, have chilies? No. Oh, it's not was... made it there. It's surprisingly declarative of me, wasn't it? I was like, no. We no, have to, you no, stupid chilies. American. Why not? No, no, no. Having a chilies. <laughs> the British tongue sees the word uh, chilies and striking yeah, around the yes, way. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, can you guys hear my washer going? No. Okay. Well, then I'm gonna leave my door wide ass open. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Hello and welcome Hi. to Well, there's your problem. It's a podcast about engineering disasters and. Uh, chain family restaurants with slides. Yeah. I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Okay, go. I'm Alice Caldwell Kelly. I'm the person who's talking now. My pronouns are she and her. Yay, Liam. Yay, yeah, Liam. Hi, I'm Liam Anderson. My pronouns are he, him. Uh, nice. Do I have anything else? No, I didn't. Yeah, unless you're going to change your pronouns. I'm thinking about changing uh, my name. I'm like slow rolling that, but like that's, that's going to happen at some point. Are you gonna, you're, gonna, you're finally going all in on Claire? <laughs> Why don't yeah, you look was... at her display name, Roz? <laughs> I'm I'm soft launching this, but I was like, I I started thinking about this because I was like, I've been on the phone to people all day, and no matter when, like, I spell my name to them, uh, no matter whether I'm like, um, they're holding a copy of my ID, everyone hears my voice, and they do not say Alice, they say Alex, and I'm like. Okay, you know oh, what? I chose okay. I chose Alice as a name because it was like easily legibly womanly to the cis people, right? And now I don't care about that, and it doesn't work on its own terms. And as I'm spending a lot of my time spelling my name to people, I'm like, man, this international phonetic alphabet, it's got some interesting names in it. It's got some energy. Like you could be like a Sierra or something. I'm like, man, what about November? That's kind of cool. What if I just do that and I never have to explain it to anybody because it's weird and an affectation? So that's, that's the plan, true. maybe, in future. Maybe. Do you think Alice Cooper had the same problem? Yeah, I think so. I've seen I Alice mean... Cooper live. He rules. Hmm. <laughs> Saying, no, I've seen him no, strongly in favor of Alice Cooper. Yeah, this is yes. a pro Alice Cooper podcast. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, what do you see on the screen here? Well, we are is... in top shape today, aren't we, folks? Yeah, I have. I've and... been awake for sixteen hours. 
Uh, and if I'm not the least coherent one on this podcast, that is a damning indictment. I ate a big pastrami sandwich right before we did this. Oh, nice. Uh, the, so the energy I, pastrami sandwich. That's the thing. That's yeah. the model. That's the product that we launched. Oh, I would buy it. Oh, can you imagine my dad gone off one of those? Just oh. pastrami and slaw leaking from everywhere. Just, <laughs> just talking about how good Mal was for no reason for two and a half hours. Well, yelling at me in the that. car again for no reason. Go ahead, Roz. The I imagine the um the the energy uh the energy aspect would perfectly counteract the uh, food coma aspect. And what we will mm. have done was invented a sort of quaalude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, the, yeah, I'm, the quail I'm, as a sandwich, yeah, yes, <laughs> and that's going to be the drug of the 2020s, you know, because we haven't down really quail loot as a sandwich, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I, you... as a sort of cured meat, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy at the meat counter, he's a drug dealer, he doesn't even know it, yes. So, what you're looking at in front of you is a Victorian photograph of a suspension bridge. This guy's Not got a kind, of a, kind of a sassy stance here. I kind of yeah, like that. Exactly. Like, There's all these up. people who have very much posed for this photo. Mm. Um, and this is a photo of the rebuilt uh, Broughton Suspension Bridge, which is just northeast or northwest of Manchester. Mm. Um, now, there's a reason why it was rebuilt, and that's because it fell down. Damn. I want to talk about that. No, not a dam, it's a bridge. That. No, oh, no, 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 let's not do this. <laughs> we have to do this, but let's not do this. Um, now, this is not a huge disaster, and no one gets killed in it. Uh, some people do get injured, but this is a disaster which is in physics textbooks all over the, uh, uh, everywhere in the world, sometimes pub trivia, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's a very famous one, and we'll get to why uh, in a bit, it involves soldiers and mechanical resonance. Mm. But first, we have to do the goddamn news. What a headline! Once again, wow, are my parents not going to understand this one? <laughs> Pro Juche podcasts. Yes. Um, and you know what? Uh, no, two thirds <laughs> of us are pro Juche podcast. One third of us is doing this under protest. Well, and Liam's you know actually, uh, Liam's actually a degrowther. That's um, right. <laughs> um, I'm very mad about bananas or whatever the hell. Yeah, <laughs> this has been an interesting, an interesting week for sort of like asking questions of political ideologies, like where will you get your insulin or where will you get your bananas? Out of I your think butt. There you go. Why do I pronounce insulin so like fruitily there? Insulin. Um, insulin. Insulin. Where will you? Where? Where will you get your insulin? Um, yeah. So, so we're not the only ones who are pro Juche, though, because uh, a U.S. Army private who got in a fight with a South Korean civilian and was jailed for like two months in South Korea prison was being sent home to the U.S. to get kicked out of the army. Um, and they, they put an escort on him, and the escort, you know, this you know, MP or whatever, takes him to the airport, puts him on the plane, leaves, and this guy, Travis, I think his name is, I don't remember his, his surname, Travis View, or whatever, gets off yeah. the plane again, somehow, um, hooks up with a tour group going to the DMZ, and then gets to here, the joint security area, with the sort of like raised curb with the military demarcation line between uh, the Republic of Korea and the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, and is heard by witnesses to say, ha ha ha, really loudly, and then just sprints northward. Um, That's Keystone Cop shit, I love it. That's pretty funny. <laughs> it's it's really funny, and uh, they don't stop him in the south. They they you know the North Koreans grab him up, um, and at time of recording, they still have him. Um, the U.S. Army's official policy is please bring our quirked up white boy back. Um, he is in so much trouble. Please, please, like, please give him back. Um, but the problem is that uh, you may be aware that um, the the two Koreas uh, are still at war, right? There's a, an armistice, but there's not like a, or there's a ceasefire, but there's not an armistice. So he is 
member of a military of a country that is at war with North Korea, who has just defected and surrendered to North Korea in wartime. Um, so they might just keep his ass, which is... Right. I'm sure he's enjoying uh, that secret workers' paradise of North Korea right now. Um... <laughs> well, apparently I, they... I... they... I will say, I, I I hope that he becomes some sort of American demigod. Mm. Oh, like um, the North um, Korean, uh, like the American defectors before who used to like act in all of their propaganda movies as like the bad guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that sounds fun. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think the by reputation, if you're um, like, if you're captured or imprisoned in North Korea and you're white, you have a pretty good time of it. Like, obviously it's bad. You get interrogated all the time, but they don't actually torture you, um, regardless of what Trump or anyone else says about Otto Warmbier. Um, so, yeah, maybe he's just having a good time there, but this is certainly the most anyone's ever done to, to get out of um, being kicked out of the army. Cav Scout as well, which is really funny, um, because the one thing I know about Cavalry Scouts is a story I heard about one of them being hospitalized for drinking the glow stick liquid for a second time. Mm. Why would you do it again? <laughs> you're I 19. Mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're a dumbass. So, he, <laughs> so he's, he's going to find out one way or another. Um, I, I genuinely don't know if they're going to give him back or not, or whether he's just going to have a, like a, a long and fruitful life in, in the DPRK. Yeah, in the uh, in the North Korean film industry, yeah, um, that's right. Oh. You know. I I think about uh, a, a tweet from our editor and friend Devon uh, from like a year ago. It's like nobody really defects anymore. You don't really hear about defections. Well, you yeah. know, it's back now. Uh, this guy did it. Back, you can defect now. Yeah, <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> we're doing proxy wars. Um, we're doing like nuclear threats. Guys defecting. It's you know the, I feel like no no one really defected to like the Taliban or anything. John Walker right? Lynn, dude. Uh, the other Burke thing is that tried yeah. to maybe you, like, defect yeah we don't to, really know right or do I don't we? feel like uh -huh. you could really defect to like the terrorists as an abstract concept. Like I don't uh -huh. think you could defect to terrorism. When we're doing oh, the war you, on terror, you sure can, my guy. <laughs> I mean, I, I know a lot of people who are engaged on one side of the war on drugs and then left and defected to drugs. So, <laughs> congratulations to drugs for winning the war on drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it must be possible to defect to wow. terror as an abstract concept. Um, uh, lots of Americans are defecting to poverty, but we don't even have a war on them anymore. Uh, <laughs> when you think about it, corrupt cops are just defecting to crime. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> or I guess they're like double agents of crime. And I mean, I have to be honest, crime is kicking our asses. Like, as, yeah, as a drugs, as, I mean, it's kind of really and only poverty. terror. And, and ter poverty. terrorism is the only one we took seriously, yeah. Yeah. Well, mm. Yeah, it's and a now we have to serious for a minute there, and then now we don't. The great society and stuff, yeah. But like, we we did kind of like beat back terror a little bit, um, and now you have to get penis detected at the airport. So yes, it was worth it, I guess. Does Khalid Sheikh Mohammed count? Because he yeah. lived here for a while. He went to didn't he go to NC State or something? <laughs> or NC A and T? He did. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed did. Wow, he has a bachelor's okay. in mechanical engineering. Hmm. I mean, it's always yeah, the engineers. True. Yeah, that's true. I, that is literally true. Yeah, like, that is engineers, literally true. Engineers and doctors you, it makes you love a bad to go person and also crazy. Love to defect to terror. Um, I, I think a lot about the Glasgow, um, like ramming attempted firebombing question mark attack, where two guys just like filled their car with a load of propane canisters and rammed it into a bollard, and then it caught fire and didn't <laughs> explode because propane doesn't work like that. And those guys were, respectively, an engineering graduate and a medical doctor. Like, I mean, uh, to be fair, neither of them could figure out a propane tank. It no. should work. It should work, right? Like, <laughs> I've seen movies. <laughs> <laughs> and so did they, you know? Some total of my engineering knowledge comes from the movie Falling Down. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've seen Speed, right? Yeah. Uh, I have seen Speed, but a long okay, time. Are you making that? Oh, we don't need to remake Speed. Mm, no. When you think about it, this kid just basically falling down his way into North Korea. That's true. And it's kind of like a one-in-one-out policy, because this is after, 
oh, I want to say last year, a guy falling down his way out of North Korea. Um, <laughs> uh, he, he, like, literally, he, like, GTA carjacked a Jeep and just drove it south. Um, and I, I think they shot him on the way out, but I think he survived. And we came and, like, fished him out. Um, oh, that's so funny. we, the US. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens with this. I think I think having more falling down incidents would be funny, um, mm. you know, as long as I'm not in the way of them. Uh, You're just trying to puzzle out what the North Korean license plate on the the jeep says, and it's like, well, what the fuck is a defense? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean the thing is, like, Biden doesn't have the like mercurial personal relationship with Kim Jong Un that Trump did, and yes. if God forbid Trump is elected again. This could make for some interesting sort of bilateral negotiations if they hold them that long. Because oh, they're gonna have to have a beer summit. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're yes. gonna they're gonna yeah. do the beer summit. Kim Jong un is gonna yeah, is gonna crack a beer with Donald beer Trump. Summit. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> Alright, well we're not we're not beating that as a joke. Yeah. News. <laughs> news. There's more news. Uh, Sapporo USA has decided to shut down Anchor Anchor, Steam Beer Mm -hmm. in San Francisco, which had been brewing continuously since, I believe, 1896. Everyone's blaming it on being the first union craft brewery. I don't think that's the case. Um, It's it's sort of a cheap gotcha from, like, people with blue ticks on Twitter, which is, like, really the mark of the beast these days. It's great. Um... Where it's just like, oh, you just this is what happens when you unionize or whatever, and it's like, no, it's shut the it, fuck up. All of this, uh, yeah. like, why is all of their politics like filtered through beer too? Like between this and Bud Light, and it's like, and the right wing yeah. beer that was going to be brewed in Northern I, Illinois. I, I was, and now yeah. this is sort of a there's a different. This is more of a tech bro gotcha than it is like oh uh, yeah, um, that sort of anti trans reactionary gotcha. But mm. Anchor Steam Bear has been sort of this. Uh, San Francisco institution for, you know, almost 130 years or whatever yeah, it's up it is there with now, the Zodiac right? Killer. Like, yeah, it's, exactly. It's a tradition. Um, it was, I believe, at some point in the last two decades, it was sold to some vodka guys Wasn't who sold- started to. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I I was gonna say I don't I don't know which ones they are. I mean, it, it just it's saying vodka guys is very funny in and of itself, because wow, that could be anybody, yeah. you know? We um, sold it to two guys who had like a handle of Tiso's. It was owned by the, 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 the Maytag blue cheese guy. What? Yeah. Wow, but, man, anytime you look at how anything is owned or like operated and you follow that through, it's like, it's sufficient to drive you insane. Right, but those were the good like, years. Mm. Uh, it was when the Maytags ran it, but they yeah. sold it to the vodka guys. Um, uh, and that's when and then, working conditions started to deteriorate, as I understand. And there was a big union drive where... Yeah, the guy who's used to own Sky, yeah, you're right. Including a esteemed podcasting colleague, uh, Brace Belden. Right. Um, you know, to Single-handedly get, uh, destroyed this, this yeah. podcast. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, this brewery. This, this um, brewery. Brewery podcast, what's the difference? Yeah. Um, you know, so the, uh, the, they organized with uh, International Longshore and Warehouse Union. Um, and, you know, the thing is, the boneheaded management decisions didn't stop. Eventually, those guys sold it to Sapporo USA, which is part of, uh, you know, it's part of Sapporo. Sapporo Brewing is in, yeah, so, so in obviously, did. Sapporo, nice Japan. They do um, essentially American-style macro brews, uh, but they're Japanese. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's a, a rice-based uh, American adjunct lager. Um, and Sapporo, I believe, despite it being a very old institution, they had never owned a craft brewery before. Now, I, I'm not sure if you call Anchor a craft brewery, I'd sort of call it a legacy brewery, sort of like Yingling, um, where, you know, they sort of predated the craft idea, right? It's like an intermediate but, brewery. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it was one of the few pre-prohibition breweries that exists that wasn't like giant, um, you know, because you needed to do a lot to survive prohibition. Uh, but Sapporo sort of came in. They're like, "Excellent, we have a new location to brew our Sapporo beer." They brought in a bunch of macro brewing style equipment into the brewery to try and modernize it. And you know, that's 
good in it so much as the, bre- the equipment in the brewery was quite outdated, as I understand, but bad in as much as the macro brewing stuff was not very good at brewing micro brew stuff. Because um, mm. all that is really optimized for beers that have like a really large proportion of rice and you need to have the same exact batch over and over and over again. And when you say, well, we're going to make an actual beer in this, it sort of craps out. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a shame, for both for me, um, someone who enjoys a Japanese beer, but also for, you know, the workers or whatever. Um, and then the, uh, you know, so they started cutting some of their really popular beers, like the Christmas Ale, um, you know, some of their best sellers. Uh, and I, I, I'm not exactly sure why that is, other than being boneheaded management, but I would suspect because those would be hard to brew on the new equipment and they want to focus on the steam beer, which is closer to a conventional lager. Um, mm. You know, they did this weird rebrand where they took this oh, yeah. very old branding and they sort of changed it so it looked like twisted tea. Um, you know, <laughs> they reduced distribution. So, like, I used to be able to get Anchor Steam at my local beer store up the street here in Philly. Uh, I can't do that anymore. Not just because they shut down. This happened a couple years ago. Uh, they got hit hard by the pandemic, too, of course. Um or did they? Actually, they might not have. I'm not sure. I have to actually look into that. Um, but, you know, Sapporo really just came in and wrecked up the place is the and long and short it and of the they story. blamed the union, yeah. Yeah, and, and, mm-hmm. and, yeah, lots of people are trying to blame the union for this. Um, and uh, it, it's it's very stupid. And it's it's a shame that you would you would take this, this institution and you would wreck it so quickly. Um, you know, because this is like the San Francisco beer and not in a way that like, the new craft breweries are, you know, this is like, no, this was the San Francisco yeah, beer shit, for 100, 130 years. Oh, yeah. um, I mean, if, if they hadn't you know, been a unionized workforce, then the angle that all of those same blue ticks would be taking, right, would be the sort of the finest anti-Japanese racism of the 1980s, right, from like oh, car manufacturing and yeah. stuff. <laughs> right, just like, the entire oh, you... plot of Die Hard, right. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. You, you you buy the thing, you run into the ground, um, and yeah, no. Uh... <sighs> Sell off the parts. Right. Um, I suspect we'll have something that looks like Anchor Steam come back at some point. The intellectual um, property know, is still valuable. Like, right. Yeah, exactly. Recipes and um, <laughs> Make victory this is like, diet. It's just, it's bizarre. Um, mm-hmm. sure. Just how this went down. Well, it's because of um, and, wokeness, and what people are, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's obviously it's because of wokeness. They yeah. made them put um, pronouns in the beer. And it's the now, same reason that State Farm is pulling out of Florida is because it's woke now. Uh, mm-hmm. they, they put pronouns in the beer and it fucked up the macro brewing equipment that uh, Sapporo installed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can't have uh, a beer that's like brewed by somebody who has gender because then the gender gets into the beer. Um, yes. <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, I don't know this this really pissed me off. Um, I was not happy to hear this, and I admit I I was never a huge fan of the steam beer, but you know it, it is something that should exist. Um, and it was you know it was the. I'm not sure if it was the first craft uh, unionized craft brewery, but it was probably the biggest. Um, and so this is a big setback, I think, for beer organizing, certainly, um, except in the large macro breweries, which are all union. Um, it's a bit, it's a big setback in sort of like market diversity. Yeah. You know, and it's just you you can't have this like fun little sort of like niche thing anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, now you got to go to like a uh, hundred billion craft breweries in uh, San Francisco and Oakland and so on and so forth. They all look yeah, identical. They all brew identical beers. What the fuck you is know? a session <laughs> IPA? Some, some Don't good. speak some to me. Were, some <laughs> of them are good. <laughs> oh, I I understand that I'm counter revolutionary. Yeah, I yeah, like the flavor flavor flavor. I'm not a, and I'm not afraid to say it. Hey, I can tie this back together though because. Two things you hate at once. You know who uh, also brews their own beer lately is North Korea because they bought a brewery from I want to say Bedfordshire and they just shipped it wholesale to Pyongyang. Uh, and yeah, so there's a, a an English brewery making domestic North Korean beer even as we speak. That's, That's an funny. interesting uh, diversion from the usual way that goes, which is Germans brew the beer. 
Um, yeah, how, surprising. You know, <laughs> maybe they couldn't afford the Germans, but um, yeah. <laughs> North Korean beer. North Korean bitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, would you say that the North Koreans are having some trouble with warm beer? Oh, <laughs> yes, right, because it's British. It's ferocious. Um, <laughs> anyway, I put a third news in. Okay. Three law, yes! Yeah, yes. Oh, this um, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, so um, Universal Studios, I believe, illegally trimmed some a bunch of trees. Well, trim is not the word here. Murdered the, some trees. The LA government is on it. They just posted something about it. Uh, in front of uh, the, the Screen Actors line. Guild yeah. and Writers Guild picket lines in front of their studio, you know, which is, they these are big, you know, shady trees that were providing shade for the picketers. And they're like, nah, you don't need those. We'll, yeah, it's, we'll, it's we'll like classic take the fine and just thing. murder these. 80 year old trees or however old they are. Yeah, to be uh, like, no, you, 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 you don't, Irish too, don't worry. Yeah, you, you don't get shade. You have to like march in the sun. It's like, you know, 150 degrees or whatever the fuck. Um, yeah. And yeah. So and they didn't have uh, a permit for it. And the thing is, right, what uh, would have been really helpful. Yes, the, because the they picketers. murdered the trees and not trimmed them. I think, yeah. I think it, maybe we should emphasize that these trees are these basically are dead. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the thing is, if you, they had installed, some of La Sombrita on the street, then the pickers oh, would be able idea. to like take mm. turns getting a little bit of shade under the tiny little curved piece of metal. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, there's been all kinds of dirty tactics uh, aimed at picketers recently. I, I forget which studio it was, but one of them blocked off the sidewalk in front of their um, in front of their offices for uh, uh, some kind of quote unquote sidewalk work. Uh, and mm -hmm. two picketers got hit by cars. NBC um, Universal did that. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's it's uh, they're they're really they're really hitting these people hard. I know there's some people who are like, oh, these you know these 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 screen actors and these writers and they're bourgeois, some kind of. I don't want to. You have you know, more in I, common it, with them than you do with the studio heads. I can tell you that mm -hmm. right. Yeah, fucking this now. is this is true. I mean these these folks are um, they, My they friend have, Josh needs a needs a job. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know there's like a lot of like, you know, there's a lot of activity around various strikes that are going to fire up soon, possibly UPS, possibly um well probably not UPS. Uh or is it UPS? Yeah, UPS. Yeah, UPS, man. Yeah, August yeah. 1st, yeah. baby. Uh and then uh who else? Um I say Unite here is having a big strike soon. Um they got really big strike funds. Uh the writers don't. Mm -hmm. So just yeah, saying, you if you want to throw your throw your support somewhere, that might be the spot to do it. <laughs> we'll put it in the description. DSALA is also doing uh, like snack distribution for picket lines, which is fun. Yes, you want to donate to that? Yeah. So you know, I uh, support our, our our friends in Hollywood, uh, which That's we fine. have because we're entertainers. <laughs> um. <laughs> That's right. I mean, I feel like the thing about like, oh, these actors are millionaires is. People don't really understand how much a million and a billion is, and what the difference right. is between them. Where it's like, no, a millionaire is like petty bourgeois, or not petty, but it's, it's bourgeois. Like you know, yeah. a dentist can be a millionaire, a used car salesman can be a millionaire. It's like from a not from you to like them is like okay, it's like Earth to the Moon, right? Fine. Don't not saying you have to feel great about them, but the difference between you and a billionaire is you on earth to like this fucking center of the universe right um it's genuinely like absurd when you like stack up how much money studio heads have uh bob Iger made like god I, he has like something like 480 billion dollars which is too much money for any person yeah. to ever have for any reason especially for someone whose job is to do nothing so yeah, I, uh, I liked uh, what one of the um, one of the studio heads or one of the studio executives said. Well, you know the the objective here is we're going to starve the writers out of their houses, right? Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. and and then uh, the, you the see Ron Perlman like, was like, "We'll kill you." Like, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, that. that was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. Be careful, <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah, I I like so one of the reactions from a writer. I forget who it was. Was like, they think we have houses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah there's there's like a minority of the actors who do and who are striking in solidarity with and an even smaller minority of the writers who are striking in solidarity with the vast majority who don't right like um 
it's it's real bad to be a working writer or a working actor uh, in Hollywood right now, apart from like five people, and all of those people are on strike for the rest of them too. So right, you write the world's greatest TV episode, and over the course of uh, twenty years, you get seventy five cents in residuals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so the uh, the city of Los Angeles is um, gonna well, the fine is gonna be substantial because they have just killed these trees for no reason. And as yeah. we alluded to with we the hope. chant earlier, tree law is one of those things where people there's a sort of like mismatch between perceived and actual seriousness. Um, and people think, uh, you know, I'll cut down the tree. It's like one fine. How much is it gonna cost me? And the answer is eleven trillion dollars for the rest yes. of your life. <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah, I, I, well, I hope the uh, I hope all that money goes to uh, some great municipal services by the city of Los Angeles. That's all I can oh, say. Oh, many, it's all many go to the cops. <laughs> It's it's many going to it's going to La Sombrita. Yeah, they they they're all uh, <laughs> they're just going to line the sort of the sidewalks with them in a so solid sort one, of like you can grind Tony Hawk style down the line of Sombrita. Just massive, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just like, not even, not even like wide, high. just like tall, just tall really yeah. tall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you, if you, the thing is, if you get the sun under the awning bit, then you've got permanent shade. Mm -hmm. We've got a sort of Dyson sombrita. <laughs> <laughs> Kubitschev type one civilization off of yeah. the fact that the <laughs> off of the Los Angeles. The city of Los Angeles so, streets department. It's so big it throws off the Our Earth's rotation. Our sombritas will blot out the sun so much better will strike in the shade. <laughs> Starts rotating around like it's the handle of Thor's uh, <laughs> hammer, you know, oh, from yeah. the huge sombrita. Uh, I really like that La Sombrita has become like a sort of um, a thing for us, you know? It's so charming. <laughs> All right, we have to do an episode. All right, news. That was the goddamn news. Okay. Uh, we're going to have to ask and answer a question we've asked many times on this podcast. Uh, what is a suspension bridge? It's a, play, gonna... it's a way to get from one place to the other. Uh, you, can, you can drive over it in your car and destroy the planet, or you can walk over it and be hit by one of the cars. Next question. Mm, it's, it's one of those things that doesn't seem like it should work, but turns out to actually work very well. Bubblebees yeah. should be able to fly. Yeah, exactly. Um, right. According to all known laws of bridge building, <laughs> stringing a cable across the thing and then hanging yeah. the thing from the thing should lead to the thing falling into the gorge or whatever, but instead it doesn't. You have a tower, you have an abutment. You have a tower, not pictured, another abutment, right? You have cables. They go over the hey, top girl, of the show tower, me your abutment. and then they go into the abutment where they're anchored, right? Uh, then there's cables that come down from those big cables, and they hold up the bridge deck, right? All the weight from the bridge deck is brought up into the cables and goes down the towers, and the cables are held in place by the abutment that prevents the tension from overloading the so on and so forth, right? I, um, I know we have to explain this every time we do a suspension bridge, but you yeah. know there are a lot of people out there who are listening to you explain a suspension bridge to them for possibly the like dozenth time in their lives and are excited by it. And it's those people. It's too those bad. People are, bridge fall down, Mr. Bond. No, those people are great, like genuinely. Thanks for your money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in the early 19th century, the suspension bridge cable was really made of big links of chain. Right or mm, eye bars, chain right? bridges again. All yeah. we fucking talk about when we talk about suspension bridges, other than when it's Santiago Calatrava, is yeah. the like fifty year period where people were like, "Why don't we try building them out of these like chain link things?" And well, we the reason why didn't have do that is because it sucks. Invent a cable, <laughs> yeah. make it less rigid. Right, I'll go. I'll go back in time and I'll. I feel them. dirty just yeah, saying. Go take the. Go take the. Uh, go take the time machine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, lots what of these are still standing. Grandpa, what did you do with the time? <laughs> just, <Well. laughs> just run straight past killing Hitler, and you're like, yeah. you, you, you brought like do, a length of. I can of, do both. I can oh, do you, both. What you do is you bring a length of like steel cable with you. You use it to 
kill baby Hitler. You like garrot baby Hitler with it, and then yeah, you right, go back. Yeah, you go back a little bit further, and you like drop that sort of like Hitler blood-stained, murdery steel cable on the desk of Isambard Kingdom Brunel, and you're like, fucking well, do this where shit, from, but let's idiot. Do this. Yeah. <laughs> I always thought there was a significant risk to going back in time and killing Hitler. Because what if you miss, and then he steals the time machine? He's a baby. Ooh. Yeah, but that baby's gonna grow up to be Hitler, and he could grow up uh, to be Hitler anywhere in history. Exactly. He could be, like, Stone Age Hitler. Oh, you 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 to see a Stone Age Hitler. Or future Hitler, for that matter. Future Hitler. Like, well, late, future Hitler's Hitler Hitler's not no. a new concept. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I Lo- me sort of naively thinking we're like, Hitler. tapped out about Hitlers, you know, we're never gonna do a Hitler again. And and yeah. meanwhile, all of the fucking, like, political tendencies in the world are like, we're gonna do a Hitler again. <laughs> Ooh, we should try that. Try the Hitler stuff. Anyway. No. Uh, no. <laughs> You're Polish, number one. Number two, <laughs> I'm Jewish. Number three, Alice. I'm I'm fucking eight different kinds of sexual minority. Yeah, don't mm. look, we can't we can't get demonetized because I'm we not don't worried about being demonetized. I'm worried about my mother yelling at me. Yeah, we're, we're not. We're not a. We're an anti-Hitler pro Juche podcast. What about this? Is, oh. <laughs> is confused. <laughs> the world's only anti-Hitler podcast. <laughs> All right, put it on the shirts. Put it on the bumper yeah. stickers. You know, I listen to the world's only anti-Hitler podcast. What are you listening to? You fucking Nazi. Yeah. <laughs> So lots of these old-fashioned suspension bridges with the chains instead Are of the fucking cables. Listening they're to still get to come Reich, come Reich, Ch- <laughs> Ch- Chapo Trap House, but it's H A U S. Thank you. Uh, mm-hmm. Brown scare. Brown That's scare, already uh, pretty much what red scare well, is. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. Lots of these. <laughs> Suspension bridges. Oh, are you mad that we went off topic? Guy who guy <laughs> That's guy like who ten slides. I'm doing my best here. I'm vamping. We gotta make it to an hour. <laughs> Lots of these suspension bridges are still standing. <laughs> 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 but some of them are not because they fell down or they were demolished or they just sort of, you know, they got old, right? We've mm. covered some of these bridges before. From the Silver Bridge in West Virginia to the Yarmouth Suspension Bridge. Today we're the one with the fucking clown in the barrel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Today we're going to discuss a famous incident which gets brought up in physics classes all the time, right? The Broughton Suspension, the Broughton Suspension Bridge. But before we do that, we should talk about mechanical resonance, right? Hmm. What is it? How do you avoid it in your big structure, right? So most well, objects have some natural resonant frequency. Explain why. Um, well, that's going to take a lot. Do it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're at like 38 minutes and we've got like three point. slides left. So most objects have this natural resonant frequency where if they vibrate in a certain frequency, those vibrations will amplify each other, right? And eventually that may lead to some kind of Catastrophic failure, right? Uh, like most banging brand- into each other, but like not in a cool fishing way, just in a sort of annoying, exciting way. Yeah. Uh, for most stuff, uh, you don't really have to worry about this, right? Um, you know, but for some stuff, it is a problem, right? So, like a wine glass is a great example. You can play a certain note and it just shatters on its own, right? Um, you know, for some things, you can take advantage of it. Like, let's say, a pendulum clock. Uh, the pendulum has its own resonant frequency, and for a very small energy uh, cost, you can have the clock run very accurately for a very long time, right? Mm. Or, let's say, on a swing set, right? Mm. You can shift your center of gravity on the swing and go higher and higher each time you swing, right? Um, tuning now, forks. It, uh, it, the tuning forks, second yeah. thing. Hi, it's Justin. Uh, so this is a commercial for the podcast 
that you're already listening to. Uh, people are annoyed by these, so let me get to the point. We have this thing called Patreon, right? The deal is, you give us two bucks a month, and we give you an extra episode once a month. Uh, sometimes it's a little inconsistent, but, you know, it's two bucks, you get what you pay for. Um, it also gets you our full back catalog of bonus episodes, so you can learn about exciting topics like guns, pickup trucks, or pickup trucks with guns on them. The money we raise through Patreon goes to making sure that the only ad you hear on this podcast is this one. Anyway, that's something to consider if you have two bucks to spare each month. Uh, join at patreon.com forward slash WTYP pod. Do it if you want. Or don't. It's your decision, and we respect that. Back to the show. For large structures, oh. resonance is very complicated. We just pause to can... like contemplate the tuning fork as a concept. Yeah. Like that. A moment of silence for the tuning forks lost in, in the war. No, I was taking a sip of beer. Mm. Yeah. Now, resonance is very complicated for large structures. You know, you at that point, especially today, you're looking at like finite elements analysis and stuff like that, right? But we can sort of get the general gist of the thing out of Hooke's law and some derivations about oscillation, right? Mm. So, uh, ah, shit, what's the guy's first name? Mm. No clue. You said Hook? Uh, I know, yes. Captain. First name, Captain. Yeah. Robert Hook. Nope, Captain. Robert Hook stated sometime back in the 1600s, uh, you know, okay, force equals KX. K is the stiffness constant. X is the distance. What this means is for a spring, the spring has a stiffness, K, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you have it, it, the force needed to move it by X is F, right? Excuse me, uh -huh. capital F, right? So, you know, that essentially that a stiffness constant exists for springs is what's going on here, which is measurable and which can be applied generically to lots of springs, mm. um, right? So I, I guess as you, you you see here, we have we have a spring which has traveled one distance with one amount of force. It's traveled another distance with another amount of force. If you had a less stiff spring, it would travel farther. So on and so forth, right? Sure, sure. With you, so, so far. yeah, so. How does this apply to like resonant frequencies? Um, well, it turns out the stiffness constant still matters, right? Um, so this would be like for you drop the weight, you, you have the spring, you attach the weight to it, you drop it. How do you predict how it goes back and forth afterwards, especially if you're in some kind of frictionless environment where it does it, it forever, right? So, um, so the guy just kind of looked at most stuff and was like, that's also a spring. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, lots of stuff is spring. Now, it, it, it helps a lot. Um, you can do a lot more advanced analysis here, but for all intents and purposes, everything is a spring. Uh, hmm. This is very relevant to, like, uh, suspension bridges. Um, so what we see is this derivation here. We have lowercase f, that's frequency, which is half of pi times the square root of the spring constant over mass, right? Um, all this is a constant. I don't give a shit about that. Essentially what that <laughs> means is, um, is if we look at a suspension bridge, um, as it's stiffer, the frequency increases, mm -hmm. but as it's heavier, the frequency decreases. Okay, cool. So make it more rigid, but also much lighter. Yes. Yay. We finally did a higher, it. A higher resonant frequency is going to be something that's a lot more difficult for uh, any natural forces to uh, replicate, right? Yeah, you accidentally do uh, the wine glass thing and like a soprano can shatter your bridge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, a soprano would not be able to... Um, you wouldn't have the magnitude of the sound to uh 
I don't um, know. I mean, you hear some pretty good sopranos these days. Plus, you know, we got amplifiers. This is something that yeah, like I a YouTuber with a like megaphone. a real right. budget could really uh, yeah, put to the so test. You know, this is the next Mr. Beast video. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that dude's gonna turn into a supervillain sooner or later. He's just gonna flip the switch. No, once he's because he, he's drunk on power, he's already been like, I've given like a hundred thousand people the gift of sight. Now he's gonna like turn in the opposite direction and be like, I've given a hundred thousand people the the curse of blindness. You know, uh, I don't understand those videos. They all take like two months to set up for like thirty seconds of content. Yeah, it's a, it's it's weird. I mean, far be it from me to like impugn anybody's content, but it it really does seem to be sort of like leveraging charity into the brand in a way that makes me really uncomfortable. I just think those videos would be more interesting if they were longer. Sure. Um, mm. <laughs> Dude just creeps me out, to be honest, yeah, it's, and, it's and not weird. just because I think he's going to start blinding people. Legally, I can't prove that. Yeah. It's a vibe. Yeah. So, like. With that in mind, now Mr. Beast, mm -hmm. the equation from earlier, the general sure. principles here. Here's two suspension bridges, right? On the top, we have this very slender, very light. This is the little belt bridge in Denmark, right? Mm -hmm. You can see the deck is very thin, right? It's very elegantly Moderate designed, so on and so forth. Scandinavian social yeah. democracy. Fucking yeah. Man. And below that is the very heavily built Manhattan Bridge in New York City. Right. Six months on tea. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now the little belt bridge here, to simplify a whole bunch, it has a smaller spring constant uh, than the more heavily built Manhattan bridge because the Manhattan bridge has all these stiffening trusses and all this extra, extra, you know, oomph built into it, right? Is that what they made it more rigid? Yeah. Yeah, they made it more rigid. Um, the Manhattan Bridge, of course, also has more mass, so it has some disadvantage there in terms of frequency compared to the very lightly built uh, Little Belt Bridge. Now, what this sort of means here is this is kind of a wash between the two ones um, as to exactly what the frequency would be, uh, but you can sort of look at how all this stuff works, uh, or at least think about it here. Um, you know, and for like modern bridges, we develop these analytical models that mitigate problems like resonance. Um, generally speaking, and, and normal loads on a suspension bridge don't happen in regular patterns anyway. It's not a big deal. But if you think about like what the resonant frequency will be, uh, you've got to take these factors into account. And now we can build everything very thin and sort of like Calatrava-esque instead of building the oh, big giant sort of like Anglion sort of like fuck you America kind of thing, which I it's it's a great shame. Yeah, um, you know, obviously, sort of the exception to this rule is the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, right? Um, mm. Which, admittedly, that was not exclusively due to mechanical resonance. There was also air elastic flutter. Which, if you went to our first live show, you learned about. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, RIP better, Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, with uh, better aerodynamic design for bridges, we've largely managed to eliminate those problems. Um, so, on your really big bridges, these, these resonance problems are not huge. But for smaller bridges, it's a different story, which is why we have to talk about soldiers. Oh, these guys. Yeah. These fucking assholes. Um, uh, yeah. So as as you oh, say, they've I, been. I'm feeling a very strong urge to go get my musket from my cupboard. <laughs> my six foot tall musket. <laughs> One of these guys is gonna uh, defect to Sweden. Um, so as you said on the slide, soldiers more or less the same in sort of like guy qualities from from that day to this. Um, and most of the history of warfare has been. Uh, close order formation, right? You, you and your besties, you're going to war, you stand shoulder to shoulder with one another. Um, and, you know, whether you have pikes or whether you have, um, like, sort of muskets or whatever the fuck, that's a convenient way of fighting because you're all together, you have, like, sort of like pushing force, it's difficult to break your formation. Um, and when you have firearms, you have, like, volley fire and stuff, and it's easier to keep coordinated because you're not really aiming at shit. So forth. Um, that also means that you have to invent marching, 
Um, and, and marching is a convenient way of getting a body of troops from one place to another. It keeps the same pace. Uh, they keep in the same order. They keep in the same sort of like close order so they can fight from the same position that they've marched from. Um, and it also lets the officers see if anyone is trying to defect North Korea, which is a right. major concern back in the days when you're just grabbing people off of the farm or whatever. Um, and yeah, so military still do this. Uh, they all still practice close order drill because Prussians in the 18th century became a bit sort of sexually perverse about men in uniform and marching <laughs> up and down um, and started to think that this imbued attributes of, you know, discipline, martial courage, um, all of these things. And so now if you're in the military, even if your job is to repair certain very specialized kinds of information systems and computers, you still have to march up and down the square sometimes. Um, Well, it's interesting because you don't you don't really think of marching as something that was invented. You know, it's just like right. something that 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 militaries always did. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely it, it dates back to antiquity at the very least. But yeah, at some point, someone has had to have you know developed a heel toe like, baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's not a very natural way of walking, particularly in its and more confirmed. ossified parade forms. Um, and and different different militaries and even different units will have different marching speeds. Um, some of which can be very very fast. Some of which can be like weirdly slow. Like if you've ever seen the the French Foreign Legion march, they have this eighty eight beats per minute. They call it the crawl, um, mm. and they really just sort of like wander, um, which is <laughs> which yeah. is fun for an elite fighting force. Can you imagine just those guys fun to marching work into a parade? <laughs> yeah, right. And here, and here come our band of like foreign assholes, and they just kind of like <laughs> slouch across the thing, like "fuck <laughs> you, fuck <laughs> you, fuck you." Give me my citizenship already. <laughs> Everybody else is on one twenty; they're an eighty-eight. Just like "fuck you, fuck you, fuck you." So, uh, uh, marching is important here because marching is a repetitive load on the ground. Mm -hmm. Let's With a, see how a that big goes. Heel strike too. Um, yeah, you get kind of crunchy sound off of a hobnailed boot hitting tarmac. Oh yeah. So this is the Broughton Bridge, hmm. right? Um, as far as I know, there's only this photograph of it, and this is the reconstructed one. Um, it was built in 1826. It spanned the River Irwell, northeast of central, northwest of central Manchester. Um, it was probably designed by a man named Samuel Brown. He was a prolific early suspension bridge designer. Some people say it was designed by a local millwright named Thomas Creek Hughes. It was owned by a guy named John Fitzgerald, who also owned the surrounding estate. It was a toll bridge, right? It was a whopping 145 feet long. Uh, I forgot um, that like in, 18, in the 1820s, you could just like be a private bridge owner and just charge tolls. And whatever yes. to be like, this is a ditch. If you want to get across mm -hmm. the ditch, you have to pay me like five gold or whatever. There's still a guy who does that in um uh on the Delaware River. Um <laughs> Joe Biden. Yeah. Yeah. Um he had four chains that supported the bridge deck. Let's see, one, two, three. Eighteen twenties rapper. <laughs> yeah. Um these were two inch rods. They were four foot six inch lo long between the uh, between the joints, right? Uh, they had two inch bolts joining them. They had these one inch suspension rods that came so, down um, from the main chains. It's all cast right? iron, right? This is all wrought iron, actually. Uh, I always get those two mixed up. Yeah, wrought so, iron's the uh, one that sucks even more, right? Wrought iron has a lower carbon content that makes it. More similar to modern steel, but not quite. Mm. Um, oh, okay. Like wrought iron was generally a lot better in tension than cast iron was. Um, but there was some overlap between the two, and metallurgy is sort of in its infancy. So the material is not always the quality you specify. We'll get to that in a second. Oh, good. Um, yeah. So... You have a wooden deck. This is a fairly simple structure. The whole thing weighed about 43 tons, right? Okay. Um, this was opened the same year as so the much just more... The, the weight of one F-250, yes. 
Yes, exactly. Um, this was open the same year as the much more famous and impressive Menai suspension bridge we saw in the slides earlier, right? Uh, that was the big one with the arches. This mm -hmm. was sort of a local landmark, and it was a point of pride in the area regardless, right? It's got some decorations on it. It's got a big lantern yeah, on one end. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. got some nice, nice, uh, nice wrought iron details. I like it a lot. You know, it, it looks nice. It's got a big lamp down there, it looks like, mm -hmm. uh, if you can see through the JPEG compression. It's like Bro uh, Broughton, you know, it's really on the map now because we got this bridge. We have the bridge. We town. can go from one side of the river to the other. Mm -hmm. Yes, and back. Mm. And so this bridge served its purpose dutifully. It carried people. It carried horses and carts. It carried a number of military units as well for a long time. Um, until April 12th, 1831. Oh, no. Uh oh Yeah. So there were 74 men from the 60th Rifle, uh, 60th Rifle Corps, returning from exercises on the Kersal Moor, right? And they were just coming back to the barracks. And they were supposed to be at ease, right? They're not marching. Mm. Um, they just walk but, like a normal yeah, person. Yeah, you just walk like right. normal people, yeah. So, but they get to the bridge, and apparently they're, they're close enough to walking in step. The bridge starts to bounce up and down. And they all think, this is kind of funny. Uh -oh. We're just bouncing <laughs> like up and say, down. Like you say, soldiers have never changed. Um. Yeah. <laughs> one, of the, one of them starts to whistle sort of a martial tune, I believe it was described, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Suddenly balls, everyone one of them's starts... broken, the other one's pregnant. Yeah. 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 Mm. Everyone starts uh, spontaneously marching. You can't, uh, as someone who is in marching band, you cannot, you cannot help it. It just happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sing me, you you start whistling to me a tune about like a paratrooper and I am in lockstep. <laughs> <laughs> this and is then, a new um, Liam Law we're unlocking here. <laughs> and then um as they're marching, the bridge bounces up and down more. And as it bounces up and down more, they start marching more, right? Yeah, it's the bouncy bridge. It's fun. Now, this is from a skill contemporary test. a contemporary account in the Philosophical Magazine, right? <laughs> That's a Riley screen name. The Philosophical yeah, Magazine. The Philosophical Magazine. This is what I'm reading so you know that I'm smart, you know? Uh, oh. you, you're, just, you're just reading like the normal guy, and I'm over here with The Philosophical Magazine. Oh, I want that magazine, the normal guy. The normal guy, <laughs> yeah. Normal guy sells a coping and seething about philosophical chats. <laughs> They were not alarmed by a loud sounding something, a loud sound something resembling an irregular discharge of firearms. And immediately one of the iron pillars supporting the suspension change, uh, that which was the right of the soldiers, and on the Broughton side of the river, fell towards the bridge, carrying with it a large stone from the pier to which it had been bolted. Whoops. Ooh. Of course, that corner of the bridge, having lost the support of the pillar, immediately fell to the bottom of the river, a descent of about 16 or 18 feet. And from the great inclination thereby given to the roadway, nearly the whole of the soldiers who were upon it were precipitated into the river. Oh, I never I want to be hate precipitated. to be precipitated I into a river. hate to be river. precipitated, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, you don't want to be precipitated into anything, you know? Yes. If you're not part of the precipitate, you're part of the solution. Why am I just thinking of shitty puns? I'm too tired. <laughs> I I'm really enjoying this. Thank you. I like I like that that we do podcasts as a form of psychological torture to ourselves. <laughs> I mm, yeah. Wherein a scene of great confusion was exhibited. <laughs> yeah, that's that tracks. Such of them as were unhurt got out as well as they could, some by scrambling up the inclined plane which the bridge presented. And others by wading out on the Broughton side, but a number very, was too like, much hurt. It's very lyrically written, you know? A scene yes. of great well, it's confusion. The, it's the philosophical magazine, Alice. Oh, that's yeah. true. The normal guy's rise up on this was like much more prosaic. Yeah, more normal guy's write up was, I fell in. The guy fell. <laughs> yeah, a bunch Bridge of them fell down, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, the normal guy, it's, it's not the most exciting to read, but it will tell you what happened. No flash. Yes. But a number were too much hurt to extricate themselves without assistance, which was immediately rendered by their comrades. 
It was nice of them. I mean, the thing is, like, if you get your leg crushed or whatever in this, it's the 1830s. You're just gonna die of something. It's gone. You're probably right. gonna die from being in the river, you know? I believe everyone survived. Yeah, but for um, how long? Yeah. You know, if you get yeah. your leg mangled or whatever, and then you, like, get, uh, like, one of the Sexist. many, many Victorian diseases. As of like, the Philosophical Magazine disease. account, everyone was still alive. Some were still in hospital, though. Hmm. <laughs> the philosophical magazine is like, but what is death, really? Yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta call up philosophical magazine and get a follow up on this. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta send him a telegraph. If philosoph, <laughs> if the philosophical magazine still exists, it's gonna be some like AC Grayling bullshit. Um, oh, and yeah. Yeah, it, it is in Britain, so don't rule anything out. Yeah. So anyway, if you um to visualize this, which is why I put this tiny suspension bridge up in the corner. Right, you know the guys. The guys are walking across. Here's that happy soldier guy. Um, as they march, this deck is going down, then it's going back up, and it's going back down, and it's going back up. That's putting stress on the cables here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is an exaggeration, obviously. Until eventually, the cable snaps at the anchorage on land here, right? And then this tower no longer has support keeping it upright, so it falls over into the river, bringing one side of the deck with it. Because, again, there's four towers on this bridge because it's, um, you know, it's one of these old-fashioned ones before the tower was a unified thing that spans the whole deck. Um, hmm. So, yeah, the, 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 the anchorage was the first thing to fail as a result of this, um, which is uh, maybe not where you would expect it to fail, but that's what happened. Um, so there's this sort of this brief investigation which found deficiencies with the anchor bolt that failed, right? Uh, there's only one of them when there really should have been two, and it was badly forged. It was actually, it had a higher carbon content than it should have, and it failed brittily like cast iron. Mm. Um, so one of the conclusions here was, well, this would have failed eventually, but... In this case, it probably would not have failed if the soldiers were not marching, right? Um, you know, because this bridge was in regular use by, you know, the military. Uh, it was also in regular use by, like, normal people, right? Lots of people cross this. They bring all kinds of stuff across, horses, carts, so on and so forth. They even mm. brought, like, uh, artillery and stuff over it. it. None of it was a problem before, even though there were some structural deficiencies. Um, but usually when there were a bunch of men marching on it, uh, they weren't marching on it. I mean, they, they, were just, they were just walking over it, right? Sure. So ultimately, a Philosophical Magazine put it down to the vibration from soldiers marching in unison, and later an article in A Memoir of Suspension Bridges from 1832 estimated that the force of soldiers marching in unison Increase the effective load on the bridge by 30 tons. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I consider, um, I believe they said the men in total probably weighed like four tons, maybe less. Um, yeah, there was 74 of them, like, in, yeah. unless they had the sort of like freakishly fat man on a like unless extremely they were heavy bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although I, I want to say, I want to say the, um, uh, the the 60th Rifle Corps was uh, originally from America, so yeah. who knows? Yeah. Bariatric Corps, yeah, yeah. But consider that the um, you know, the total weight of this bridge was 43 tons, and 30 tons is a lot of extra weight. Yeah. So uh, it's really like counterintuitive that you like you notice it more on like a smaller bridge. Yeah, it's uh, it's the small bridges you gotta watch out for. The big bridges, the big bridges are are, are built pretty solid. The small bridges, though, oh boy. <laughs> mm, yeah, I've been over a few and like sort of like out of the way bits where it's like, oh, I don't uh, feel good about this. This is just some rocks time. that someone threw in a stream and like eight thousand years ago. Oh, hey, it's the Albert Bridge. So this it is the is reason the Albert why Albert Bridge. This is the reason why I know about this, is you mentioned this is like a thing that they teach you in like physics classes or whatever. It's also a bit of trivia that you will learn if you grew up in London and your dad ever had occasion to drive you over the Albert Bridge, because dads are like incapable physically of not saying, did you know, 
Um, yeah. That if you're if you're like getting marched across this bridge, you have to break step because otherwise you'll collapse the bridge. Uh, every time, every time you go over the bridge, back and forth. Yeah, I, I, I the, the result of this was, you know, um, number one, a lot of uh, suspension bridges sort of fell out of favor for a while, right? Mm. They were sort of suspect. Um, they didn't build as many for a bit. But the other thing was military procedure was altered in such a way that soldiers had to be at ease while crossing bridges. Um, as you can see from the contemporary sign on the Albert Bridge here. Yeah, right? still there to this day. Uh, um and it's, it's sort of like a little local meme, I guess. There's a pub next to it that has a sign that says, like, all troops must break step when marching into this house or whatever. It's like... <laughs> now, you know who didn't learn this lesson? Is it me? Because mm. I never listened no. to... I, I, or is, oh, it's the French, isn't it? It's the French, yes. Uh, Fucking Napoleon. Uh, yeah. This is 18... Oh, yeah, it would be Napo Napoleon, III? Napoleon, yeah. III. Napoleon, Napoleon three. Napoleon three. Not Napoleon three. Not Napoleon. I'm, I I just had a, a very strange phone call with the government. I'm. Uh, oh, are we in trouble? Are you in trouble? No, are we no, gonna die? Not, no, no, I'm good. Everything's fine. It was just strange. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> so a Kafka quail. Yeah, 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 yeah very Kafka sort of Alice. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the government called you off, and they're like, "Well, you you you, you turned into a bug." And, and I just say, guy. oh, good, please give me my two legs. When can I expect are, them? Are you who you say you are? Are you who you say you are? Yes, are you I, have, you I are? had to verify my, they called me and I had to verify my identity four times. Oh my God. Yeah, okay, yeah, that is a Kafka type <laughs> I am Liam, yeah. like, hi, this is my Prove phone number, this is where I live. No, I don't know where Justin Rosniak is, can I take a message? <laughs> I still don't know where I am, thank God. Anyway, uh, so. you're, you're, you're in a row house with a nuclear reactor in the basement. <laughs> that's not his. That's not his. Hey, that's that not might. his. I didn't say. I didn't say so. Just that it was a, an operating nuclear reactor, and it is in your basement. But you're not privy to its operations. It's not mine. Um, so at the uh, Angers Bridge in the, France, I yeah, love the, the Angers Bridge. The, the, the Angers, Angers Bridge. The yeah. Angers Bridge. It's actually where I live. Yeah, <laughs> I live under there. It was very rude when they collapsed it, and I had to rebuild my house. <laughs> uh, in 1850, they uh, uh, Napoleon or whoever—I don't know who it was. Well, it uh, would have been Napoleon the Third, I think. Napoleon the Third yeah, was. It, I thought he was then later. Uh, ooh. Then is the third. Uh, the podcast that does its research live on air. They marched a bunch of soldiers over oh, during a storm. Don't worry about me. And. Uh, it collapsed. It was Napoleon III, 1850 to 1852. Yeah, yeah that's fucking dumbass. And then Emperor anyway. and from 1852 to 1870. Now, if I could just wildly take us off the rails for a second here. Please. Uh, Alice, let me ask you a question. Yes, Dan. Let me ask you a question. Were you ever in marching band? Do you have was, marching band? I was never in marching band. So, uh, we don't really have it. I did march, okay. but only in the cadets, and I was never good at it. It was the one thing I never, well, not the one thing, but it was one thing that I never really got was drill. Uh, I am, I'm not coordinated enough for I, it. I, I, I have said this, there are sort of sleeper Liam activation modes, one of which is mm. if you hum blood on the risers, I will fall into step. <laughs> uh, I'll no, go, sir. I'll fall. You, you, you know that scene that yeah, you know that scene in Animal House where the marching band mm. is crammed into an alley. That happens to me fairly frequently. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, the bridge collapsed and killed two hundred soldiers. Uh, Jesus, well, why aren't we talking about this instead of the fucking like British one that didn't kill anyone? Because this is the because classic people one. keep asking us for a cleansing episode after the uh, yeah. the the, the gr apparently we got a little too gruesome for a little too long there. Yeah. Mm. Fine. Well, in this case, you get yeah. like seventy British dudes getting dunked in a river. In, in Only forty Manchester. of them actually. Yeah, they That's get they not get enough dunked British there. dudes getting dumped yeah. in the river. Hey, <sighs> can someone flash up a picture of Mount Patton's boat getting blown into low Earth orbit? If we have that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so this is uh, this is just one of those things in sort of the early days of like big metal construction, engineering, sort of stuff like that. I'm not exactly sure how you blame this one on capitalism as as much as we usually like to do this. This is oh, sort well, of capitalism a mode. led. Capitalism led to the development of standing armies and the formalization of military drill, which means 
that both the bridge and the troops marching over it existed because of capitalism. You're welcome. There we go. All right, let's go. Yeah. But you know, it's sort of a a failure mode no one really anticipated was exacerbated by some structural flaws no one really knew how to test for. You know, this is just the price of progress, right? Well, just to be like, shit happened. Yeah, shit happened on this one. I mean, I, I, I guess that's sort of useful for us to remind ourselves that sometimes it is just like, eh, yeah, eh just fucking, eh, sometimes it's, sometimes someone up there just doesn't like you. Sometimes yeah, they want exactly. you to get wet in a river. Or if you're French, yeah, die. So, so sometimes, uh, sometimes they just want to throw you into God's dunk tank. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we know which side God was on in the Napoleonic Wars. Yeah. Um, so the Browden Bridge was rebuilt um, basically in kind with some structural reinforcements, which I believe were specified by Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Oh, um, fucking guy gets everywhere. Yeah, no. I know, but it fell at, well, Britain's not that big. Um, <laughs> tiny country for tiny people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It fell into disrepair by the early 1900s when it was replaced by this structure, which is still there today a big truss bridge. Quite nice. Um, I like the green. Yeah. Very fetching. Oh, the green is nice. You get the, the open lattice girders on top that are rounded. Those are very oh, yeah. nice. I like those. I do like yeah. the green a lot. And this thing hasn't fallen over at all. Well, I mean, here's the thing, right? You'll notice that the Albert Bridge notice just says all troops must break step when marching over this bridge. However, you can march over a bridge. Us and the we could get the gang together, right? And we could march over the Albert Bridge. We're not troops. We're not in the military. It is like, a high school marching band across. You it. could run high school <laughs> marching oh, bands fun. back and forth over the Albert Bridge until it fell into the Thames, and there would be nothing anyone could do about it. And not only could we do that, but we must, should, and will. <laughs> That's our commitment to you, the listener. We will get some like marching bands like that one OK Go video. And we're gonna march him up oh, and down yeah. um, until the Albert Bridge falls into the Thames. It's like when everyone uh, crammed onto the Golden Gate Bridge uh, for its fiftieth anniversary, and it was alarmingly close to uh, its uh, maximum design load. Um, mm. <laughs> turns out, lots of people heavier than cars. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the thing, especially if they bring the like freakishly heavy bicycle. Yeah, this is no. true. Um, and then, okay, did we learn anything from this? Uh, I mean, that's the uh, Millennium Bridge, that's which the, is the yeah. progress, I guess. Yeah. An entertaining time. You've got, um, uh, the Tate Modern behind it on the right hand side, and then St. Paul's off to the left hand side. Um, and yeah, I remember when this opened because it was one of about 50 trillion millennium things that they did in London. And like most of them, it was shit initially. Um, yeah. And people were, it, like, they closed it a bunch of times because it was wobbling. Um, oh, fun. And, and then people were, like, specifically trying to go on it in order to, like, because again, we will never learn. We're just like this. We were like, fun bridge activity, you know? I'm, I'm going to go bouncy, on bouncy, the bridge. Bouncy, the, the yes. wobble. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, the the thing is, your pedestrian bridge, uh, especially novel or interesting ones, you can still have resonance issues, uh, but we have more techniques to solve them now, right? Uh, mm. And yeah, the Millennium Bridge was a big one. It was very bouncy when it opened because they did this very novel, very fancy, low slung suspension design, right? You can sort of see here are the cables, and then there, there are these. Um, sort of structural members that are slung underneath the pedestrian section, um, holding up the actual bridge deck. Um, it's weird. It needed to be done for some clearance reason that I'm not certain of. Um, yeah, there's barely any shipping traffic on the Thames, especially at that, but like... I think yeah. it was like a, a upper a vertical clearance issue. I, I don't understand at all. Um, but mm. yeah, so, you know, this had a lot of problems with resonance and a lot of problems with bouncing around when it opened. And eventually they solved it with some very expensive, uh, actively controlled hydraulic rams at each side. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, you know, you can just, you can just solve anything by adding moving parts, obviously. By paying more money. <laughs> yeah. So you're telling me that there's a guy in the Tate Modern 
or in like one of the I, I don't remember what the fucking like mock Tudor schools are like City of London, City of London girls I think. Um, it's just in there with a PlayStation controller, just banging these things back and forth to stop the bridge Working from banging you the in the river. Does. I think it's passively controlled somehow. I'm not exactly certain how it works. Um, I prefer my you know, my vision for it. Yeah, you know, yeah, if, if you walk across the Millennium that, Bridge, yeah. the only thing saving you from contracting Viles disease from the Thames water is a guy with a PlayStation controller That's whacking a couple of, those... of big <laughs> mass dampers back and forth. This is one of those games they pay you to play because it sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Logging in for my shift on um, uh, a large hydraulic RAM simulator. Yeah. But uh, that's the story of the Broughton Bridge. What did we learn? All troops must break step before crossing suspension bridge. You can you can All march across. troops must break dance across bridge. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I'd watch that. Uh, That'd be pretty yeah. good, actually. Only suspension bridges. Any other kind of bridge, you can march however you want on pretty it. Much fine. Probably fine. Yeah, probably fine. Haven't had the, haven't had this happen to a cable state bridge yet. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you want to test this, here's the thing: you just got to get you and like seventy three of the guys together. Um. Learn to march, which easier said than done. I can tell you that from experience. Uh, and then just you know, try it, try it out. Road test your local bridge. There you go. Yeah. I mean, again, or you know what? We should go back to just building arch bridges. Yeah. No, 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 I like really my big idea, arch bridges. No. It's <laughs> like the thing is, especially if you're American, um, you, you're right to keep and bear arms. It's founded on the idea that like you and the boys can get together and found uh, a well-regulated militia. Right. Well. Yeah. One of the things that a well-regulated militia does is keep and bear arms, but another one is a lot of marching up and down. Um, and over bridges, for instance, you fired the first shot at us. Well, I would just be hoping those. that our militias go in the drink, because our militias are all right-wing freak shows. Well, that's the thing. That, you know, they finally get to serve a valuable public function, which is uh, testing in bridge drink. integrity and going that's in rivers. Point, yeah. Those guys don't strike me as marching types. They strike me more as... Um... Sulking types. Sulking yeah. types, yes. <laughs> we have a segment on this podcast called Safety Third. Shake hands with danger. Ooh, it's a promising image. Yes. Oh. Hello, Justin, Alice, Liam, and guest. This is uh, wrong. Nope. It's been a minute since we got a guest. We should do that again. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Well, hopefully one of the next episodes, yeah. Uh, this safety third comes from a story I was told by my grandfather, who, in the 1970s, worked in a professional field well known for their strict safety guidelines and unmatched care for their workers, the United States Nuclear Weapons Development Program. Oh, no. Yes. I'm clapping my little hands together. Perfect. <laughs> like a little seal. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. The little delicious treat for Alice. Yeah. Specifically, he worked for a now-defunct company called Hercules Incorporated on the solid fuel rockets for the Polaris IRBM project. I'm not sure what IRBM. Intermediate, Intermediate range. range. Intermediate, Intermediate range. Okay. Uh, well, okay. The Polaris Hercules, goes on the submarine. Hercules Incorporated was presumably chosen for the project because they'd already killed at least 100 people when their New Jersey dynamite plant exploded in 1940. Ooh, that might be an episode. Yeah, it's, um, it's like making your bones, you know, once you blow up a factory, you're kind of like your made weapons you're made. contractor. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> you're, you're real Italian. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, we only do like full Sicilian arms companies. A side note, while I've gathered enough evidence to believe my grandfather, the exact details of the following incident are almost certainly either still classified or were lost when Hercules went under. I think it happened at the Tekoi testing facility in Utah, which I attached a photo of, but beyond that, I'm going to keep quiet. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, am I supposed to have said that? Uh, anyway. Oh, Whatever. Don't include it if you don't want to read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The incident occurred during the testing of one of Hercules' solid-fueled rockets. When testing their rockets, the company's standard procedure was to stick them upside down on a large reinforced platform in the middle of nowhere and hooked them up to an ignition switch in a bunker several miles away. Mm -hmm. Now, importantly, this particular test site had a large concrete path between the bunker and the platform. 
Now, the testing uh-huh. platform itself was far away enough that if the path hadn't been there, the worst anyone inside the bunker would have suffered when the rocket exploded were some ruptured eardrums, which is actually still pretty bad. Yeah, you don't um, want to have that happen to you. Unfortunately, the path was there, so when the rocket exploded, it triggered a kind of reverse domino effect in the large concrete slabs that made up the path. This carried the shockwave all the way to the control bunker, whereupon several dozens of tons of supersonic concrete debris reduced both the bunker and one very unlucky person inside it into mulch. Ooh. As we learned from the Nadalen catastrophe, what you want to do is not be in the closest bunker to the thing, even if it's a yes. convenient place to have a cigarette. You want to go and be like, is there a second bunker further away than the first bunker? Yeah. Or you could That's... be at like the, the Elon Musk uh, fucking starship site where mm. the entire thing is like 500 feet square. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just launch from a parking lot. I, I, yeah, this exactly. is... This is so unpredictable, though. Just to... Uh, I... I, mm. I would not have expected that to happen. No. No. Yeah. Y- it, like, genuinely to the point where, like, you, you test the engine, you shut off the engine, you go check on, like, Dave in the bunker, and you find out that both Dave and the bunker are now mulch, mulch. and you're like... No, oh. no longer there. No Ooh. longer of the earth. Mm. <laughs> Chunky marinara. It's gonna be yeah. an awkward phone call. Yeah. According to my grandfather, the family of the victim got a hefty payout from the feds to keep quiet about the incident, and the site stopped being used for testing not long after. I mean, okay, it's it's shitty if it's like your dad or your husband or whatever, but on the other hand, of all the ways to get like a large payout from the federal government, just getting a guy, Mulched. you know, a sort of ma- man in black sort of guy, you know, knocking on your door and being like, yeah, your husband got mulch or whatever, here's $500,000. Here's, here's, here, here, mm-hmm. here's the publisher's clearinghouse check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you may have already won government. mulch husband. And the note says, very sorry, frowny face. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And they just <laughs> leave, it's like, well, your husband was mulched, here's $500,000, goodbye forever. I, I mean... I hope Shit, the check that's... clears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, the moral of the story, fuck if I know, I was like 12 when I first heard it. Mm-hmm. Listen to your high school physics teacher, I guess. I guess so. Yeah. About both this and resonance. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's all, it's all resonance, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all resonance. It's fissing. Everything's Everything springs. Back and Everything's forth. a fucking spring. That's true. Everything's a spring. I learned that from Polybridge. <laughs> um, <laughs> very, very alarming. Yes. All right. Well, that was safety third. Shake hands with danger. Our nice. next episode will be on Chernobyl. Does anyone have any commercials before we go? We have a PO box. You can send stuff to it. I'll um, pick it up. Yes. You should send me the stuff that I have yes. from the pick uh, the PO box. All right. Uh, that's all right. You're advertising uh, to us. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. Um, yeah, you'd listen to all of our stuff. Bye. Bye. Yes. Let Alice go to bed. <laughs>